So, mm -hmm. okay. So today is the chapter A of of our hands-on machine learning with R. So chapter A is a kind of like a very one of the most one of the most one of the I would say simplest machine learning technique for the classification problem, which is the k-nearest neighbor. So, so k-nearest neighbor is a like like you, like I said, it's a very simple algorithm. Like uh, each observation is a predictive based on the, its neighbor. So, like, that means to to predict the attribute of the feature of the this uh, triangle one, we actually use the the near feature of this, the circle ones. So depending on the how, how, depending on the distance to the each observations, that actually determines about the these attributes of the of the uh, of the objects. So depending on the how what kind of uh, similarity, like a uh, closeness, proximity to the proximity of the my a uh, thing uh, predictive objects that actually determines about the attribute of the of the this the object that we want to predict, depending on the its neighbor, literally its neighbors. It actually this one is reminds me of the of the method called the special point pattern analysis. Because the special, when we try to do the special point pattern analysis, it is also the same thing. So, for example, like a, here is the weather station one, and then a, here is the weather station two, and then a, I I said this is my location. For example, in that case, how I can determine the maybe temperature of my location is based on the uh, temperature of the weather station one and temperature of the weather station two and then based on the based on the distance can be affected or using as the weight for the measuring the these kind of things it is also pretty similar algorithm and then a similar mechanism when we try to do the knm like a care needs nearest labor so what is the problem is k is the k nearest it means uh, how many how many neighbors we have to uh, use to determine the features of of the observe uh, predict things that we need to predict it so maybe two or three or four that means we're gonna use the maybe Two closest or three closest neighbors to predict the predict the outcome. That's the how these things is about. Actually, this is everything. What I just said is the basic definitions. At the same time, that is actually everything. So, actually, it's done. But the thing is, let's move on to the some some clear example. So, in here, we wanna use these kind of a diary. Like a not diary, like a libraries, like a TPLR, and then it says ggplot, sample, recipes, and carrots, which is we always use. And then the one of the simplest thing is the AMS chain and AMS train and AMS test one data set, which we always been using in the previous chapters. So we actually try to do the uh, some kind of attribution kind of a uh, training variable like a 70 percent of our data set going to be the training one and then we can training train the our model by using the our code and then uh, when we say about the uh, measuring the similarity i actually briefly explain about the uh, at the top but the thing is the, in here Similarity actually uh, equals to the uh, distance. Okay, so distance actually identifying how similar 
or how close to the new record being predicted uh, from the from the neighbor that we already know. Okay, so in so when you looking at the, this a uh, figure eight point one, maybe assuming that the, this red one is the one we need to predict it, like a, out like a predicted outcome, we can think about the using the this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, this one, this one, this one, etc. Right? Maybe assuming that uh, this square is uh, what we can count for the 10, 10, uh, if we can say about the 10, 10 neighbors to be to determine the attribute uh, features of the our red circle one. This blue one gonna be the possible neighbors for uh, to predict the that red circle. Okay. Maybe what if what if k equals maybe three in this case? K equals three is the three means the three three closest. Or what is called nearest ones should be picked up. So that means we have to pick this one, this one, and this one for our analysis. That because those three, three, uh, three observation is the most the closest one to uh to the uh to the our predicted outcome. So those three features gonna be used to predict the this outcome. What about the k equals one in this case? In this case, we only using the one closest one, uh, closest uh, home in this case to predict the feature of the, this one. So in this in these two cases, like a k is the more than two, that means we have to decide uh, predict our outcome based on the like a average kind of things. But if we have a k is equal is one, that actually means it is literally kind of a matching. Matching uh, matching outcome. Based on the, the most closest one. OK, actually, this one is also the kind of the same thing for the like uh, when we try to. Uh, uh, try to control group with the similar characteristics for the for the one to one match but anyway when we have a, have a k, k equal one is the just kind of a simply matching outcome like a one to one match one to one matching outcome but if you have a more than two nearest uh, nearest neighbors to predict the our outcome that means we're gonna try to maybe average them, or maybe we can use the medians, or maybe minimum or maximum, depending on the, our research context or research questions, okay? So that's the how KNN algorithm should do. And then now our next question should be the, what kind of, uh, what kind of distance measures we have to use, okay? So let's talk about the simple form, simple, simple mathematic things, okay, in here. So this is the x1. I would say this is the x2. And then this is the y1. This is y2, assuming that this is a kind of a things. And then the first one is a is x1 comma y1. And then B is located is X2 comma Y2. In that case, what is the shortest distance between the straight line distance between the, these two points is just root square X2 minus X1 square plus Y2 minus Y1 square. That is because of the we can actually think about the drawing the uh, this um, 
this what is called a triangle with a perpendicular uh, angle. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, perpendicular triangle. And then uh, this one is actually x2 minus x1, and this length is y2 minus y1. And then based on the our Pythagorean kind of a theorem, we can actually, <laughs> oh, excuse me, we can actually um, measuring the distance between the, these two points, right? So like a straight line closest uh, distance. That is actually what is called the Euclidean distance. In the in the three D or two D spaces, okay. So that's the kind of a Euclidean distance is about in here. This one. And then we also think about the, what is called the Manhattan distances, which is the just kind of an absolute value of the difference between the two values. Like we can just only use the absolution, absolute symbol. That means it is actually called the absolute yeah, distance. And also there is another thing called the uh, 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 Euclidean distance is the most the simplest one, and then most the straightforward one, and then the most the sensitive to the outlier because of this one is actually take the squares. So that means the between the differences between the two two observation actually have a very sensitive about the if they are very far from to each other. That means it is very sensitive to the outlier, like. Uh, for example, in here is the hour point, and then there is another point up here and up here. These two distance is a lot of people. Uh, when we try to calculate the Euclidean distance, it it actually changing uh, difference between the, these two Euclidean distances a lot. Okay, and then but Manhattan distance is just kind of a simple distance about the, just like a, uh, like this, like a, just only only straight line kind of a kind of a distance measurement. Okay, yeah. Like Ricardo actually shared about the link for the most most popular distance metrics in KNN. But the thing is, uh, one of the one of the simplest distance is the Euclidean distance, which is also very straightforward distance. And also sometimes we can use the Manhattan distance uh, for the for for the uh, reflect the reflect the similarly by the distances. Okay. And then let's move down here. Yeah, like you like you see here, Euclidean distance is the is the, it is actually shortest and straight line. distance between the two points. So closest, most the closest and straight line, close straight line distance is like this. And then uh, this one is uh, the, the formula is the up to the top. Manhattan distance is the absolute value. So it is always like a perpendicular kind of movement. Okay. Uh, perpendicular. Distance move, okay, to get to the point through the here to there. And then uh, there is also another distance between the uh, between the observation, which is the Minkowski kind of distance, is the more like a generalization of the Euclidean Manhattan distance, which is, is a kind of a combination of the both of them. Like uh, we also take the absolute value and then power by Q. And then that is also kind of a root square by by Q. So that means Q versus one is the Q square root is X A J minus X B J and Q. These are the kind of a basic thing, but it is always a sigma for the everything. Okay. 
this is the Minkowski kind of a distance, which is the combination of the Euclidean and Manhattan distance. And also there is another distance called the Mahalanobis uh, Maha distance. In this case, actually, it's a little slightly different because this one is a more like a normalized and also standardized distance because it actually using the correlation value, like the Pearson correlations or Spear, uh, Spearman correlation value between the two variable. That means rather than the using the using the one single variable, in this case, there's a two different kind of variable, like attributes to measuring the similarity. We actually using the its correlation between the, those two variables as a distances. So that's the actually Maranovis uh, distance. So uh, maybe I think that when you Google the KNN distance matrix, there is actually have a, a lot of detailed explanation about the, how to measure the sim distance as a uh, as a measure of the similarity across the observation in the data set. But but there is a among the, those kind of distance measures actually some of the good documentation explains about the, what's the pros and cons of the depend uh, of the measurement. So I would say is the Euclidean distance is the most uh, simplest and straightforward distances. So I think the Euclidean distance is the one of the most commonly used distance metrics as a as a it's a uh, measure for the similarity across the uh, observation. And also we can sometimes use the Manhattan distances. I did, I found that there is a few academic literature that uses the Maharanovis uh, distances. But as I can say, it is always depending on the, what kind of a research question you have and then what's the, your research context and objectives. Depending on that, we can actually think about the one of the most uh, appropriate one as a distance matrix. And I also uh, heard that there is a kind of a, uh, like a diagnosis testing about the, which matrix is a more appropriate depending on the, our things. Then that is actually called uh, whenever we actually uh, learn the all of the different kind of a KNN uh, algorithm by using the all of the different kind of a distance measures, and then we can just uh, testing the precisions or accuracy uh, or recall something like that to measuring the which which distance measure is the most more appropriate depend in terms of the, our precision or accuracy of the, our prediction model, like a KNN, KNN prediction. Okay, that actually determines about which distance measure can be determined, but it is quite time consuming to do that. So do you have any question or anything so far? Uh, Kianto, I just have a comment in terms of the Manhattan distance, mm -hmm. uh, because I had a, I had a project oh. where uh, I had to uh, uh, predict mm -hmm. the the distance mm -hmm. uh, of uh, taxi rides. Okay, oh. you know, uh -huh. kind of a, a an Uber, you know, uh, <laughs> a project. Oh. And yeah. one of the things that we had to consider was precisely the Manhattan distance because it was in New York, mm. and you know, you cannot. Usually, you cannot use Euclidean distance from point A to point B because mm -hmm. you have to travel by street, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to use, uh, you know, something like Google Maps uh, to calculate uh -huh. the real distance from point A to point B, mm -hmm. and then try to predict, for example, uh, the time it will mm -hmm. require depending mm -hmm. on the on the hour, etc., and mm -hmm. also, uh, you know, uh, different counts of passengers and all that. It was an interesting, uh, an interesting project. Okay, mm. but uh, one of the things that you know you had to consider was the metric for the distance. Mm. 
And usually the KNN in particular, uh, the, the default is Euclidean. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, if you do that analysis with a default in the KNN, uh, mm -hmm. you're going to be uh, underestimated uh, mm -hmm. the, the time and the, the distance. Mm -hmm. So it's important that you realize, especially here in the KNN, because it's based on, on distance between the point that you want to uh, predict and the, and the neighbors, mm -hmm. that you make sure that you are using the right metric uh, for mm -hmm. the distance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is actually the right one, because especially for the when we try to take the take the special kind of a dimension as into the considerations, right? You can see in the in the in my screenshots, there is also also called the network distances. Depending on the existing street network, we can actually um, measuring the what is the shortest path path mm -hmm. between the yep. location. A and B, and then um, when we doing this one, you will as you can see on the right at the top. When we looking at what is called the service area, mm -hmm. like a possible inferential area, it looks like right. this depending on the load networks. Sometimes it it sometimes have this depending on the networks, load networks. So this is also kind of another measurement, but this one is a more like a special kind of a uh, dimensions. But right. in the machine learning, like the KNN neighbors, it actually that KNN neighbors, I uh, KNN algorithm actually you use the adop actually adopt uh, adopted the distance as a measure of the similarity, not the actual mm -hmm. distances. So that right. mean yeah that means whenever we have uh, a lot of uh, set of the variable, we actually keep increasing the out dimension like uh, x2 minus x1 square y2 minus y1 square and then uh, z2 minus z1 square etc it can be unlimited mm -hmm. but but in the special things we only we have uh, x and y coordinates sometimes z and then sometimes maybe maybe t which is the time dimensions but 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 in this case, we we actually have only four different kind of uh, parameters that measuring the distances. But in case of the KNN, depending on the how many variable we have to consider as a measure of a similarity, dimension can be increases on uh, in in depth uh, in in I would say indefinite way. So that's the kind of a little bit differences between the geo network, uh, geospatial mm -hmm. network distance, and and uh, hypo hypothetical distance metrics as a measure of a similarity. So in this case, we uh, KNN actually adopted the latter one, not the former one. So, but anyway, I also want to uh -huh. to point that. As we are predictors to our model, it is harder to this method to find a similar uh, sample to make the prediction. Mm. Yeah. Right. So why right. is like for the it's like you in this is there is a clue of this dimensionality. So it's like when you add new k, so you are you are making less flexible the model. Mm -hmm. So when you have predictors, you have less example to account for more information. Mm. Yeah. So in that case, when you have, for example, 100 predictors, mm. it's impossible that you find one or, or five examples similar to one if you just have 100 observations. Mm. So yeah. It's like, okay, you have just two predictors and you are trying to find five points similar to this new point. Yeah, mm -hmm. you will find it easily. But you have 100 predictors to find those five will be really hard. Mm. Yeah, it is actually a matter of the computations, you know, because uh, actually the thing is the way you can see in the formula, 
uh, presented in the, these sections. Actually, the formula by itself is very simple. So for the com for, for computer, it doesn't take too much time to calculate the, these kind of uh, similarity kind of uh, values. But the thing is, like you said, maybe other than the, this kind of a simple distance measure, like uh, between the, these two variables, in this case, ground living area and then air is built. Maybe what if we have a, we have a 100 features to, uh, 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 that we should use to estimate the distance, what is called the similarity of the observations. That actually takes about uh, like a, like a, for example, like a Euclidean, Euclidean distance is maybe x2 minus x1 square and then y2 minus y1 squared, blah, 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 blah. And then these are the 100, right? This might be takes a lot of communications. Like uh, for example, we have a 100 features. In this case, for the simplicity and the illustrative, illustrative purposes, it actually only using the two features but the thing is, if we have uh, 100 features to to estimate the similarity between the two these two observations, Euclidean distance also contains the 100 features under the this square root. And then, if maybe if maybe when we have a uh, hair nearest going to be the 10 for this, we have to calculate this this formula in the 10 times uh, based on the based on the that uh, that one. But the thing is what is the bad thing about the KNN is not we do not actually measuring the Euclidean distance for the only nearest one. Whenever we have a outcome to to be predictive and then there is a maybe our observation is the maybe 10,000 for example, that means a if we have a K is the 10 nearest neighbor, and then we have a 10,000 observation, we actually calculate the this Euclidean distance 10,000 times. And then comparing the all of the those distance, and then finding the one of the, finding the top 10 closest, uh, closest observations to predict uh, this outcome. So there is actually three steps. One is the calculating the Euclidean distance and then uh, sorting the dead result and then take the top 10 closest one. That is the basic mechanism of the KNN, which is the very, very in, in efficient computational algorithm gonna be involved uh, while we conducting the KNN. So that means if we have uh, too many features with uh, too many observations to compare, to select the top 10 or top K uh, closest to neighbors, it, um, it, we need, it requires a lot of uh, computational power to measure and compare those kind of distance measure. Yeah. Does that the make sense? Is, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And that also will may yeah. we have a poor resource. Yeah, right. So yeah. So yeah. this you will need in order to take advantage of this, this that data, you have 100 features, you might need to apply a reduction technique. Yeah, right. Dimensional mentioned a reduction technique. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that's the how thing how things about the maybe I would say about the pros and cons of the KNN. So let's go to the next one, like the pre-processing. Pre-processing is a kind of a quite simple, like a, in, in here in the, for example, it is about the kind of a, what's the distance difference in the distance depending on the, when the attribute that we use for the uh, uh, similarity is the difference to the one another. Cause the, for example, the home one is the bedroom is four and then year built is the 2008, and then home two is the two and 2008. 
and three and on uh, 1998, that means when we compare it to the home one and home two, maybe there is a differences between the bedroom, but the thing is the distance is the two. But the thing is uh, when we compare to the home one and home three, uh, difference between the bedroom is not that um, large, but the thing is that there is a huge difference between the ear built that actually produced uh, this kind of a huge distance outcome compared to the previous one. So that's the reason why when we're looking at the uh, uh, Euclidean distances, actually this distance uh, function actually default is the Euclidean distance. So in this case, Euclidean distance is highly uh, sensitive to the difference between the outcomes. Uh, features among the variable observations. That's a lot this one is about. And then going down, and then our next question is how we can choose in K, right? That's the actually main question because the K nearest mean neighbors means that depending on the how to measuring the K actually determine the determine the accuracy of the predictions, right? This one is actually very simple. We just uh, try to uh, try to repeatedly run the uh, train the model from the two, three, four, five, etc. is like a like a queue. If we have uh, some of the our maximum value of the nearest neighbor to be considered, so we just uh, keep repeatedly uh, train the run the model, and then estimate about the cross validations method or we can call the grid uh, grid search kind of method to to evaluate the uh, depending on the two three four five and then q what's the smallest uh, uh, error and then ROC code that has that's the that's the actually what is called the trial and error kind of approaches. That's the, what this one is about. So when we try to do the ROC curves, like a measure and then a number of the neighbors, we can see about the, these kind of curves, right? And then we we have to you only use the one of the most maximum ROC curve, right? This is the 271 in this case. So that's the what we what the optimal K is about, which is quite large. Like the K is the 271 means if we have a one 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 observations that we need to be predictive, we have to select the 271 neighbors close to the this predicted outcome which is a lot, <laughs> but anyway, so that's the kind of what this one is about. And then, and then 8.4 is the, we actually, instead of the using the, our housing attrition example, in here, we actually using the, using the, what is called the amnist example about the handwriting numbers, images, and then how we can predict the, those images based on the other other known observations. Okay, for example, like uh, if we if you can you can write number like this, maybe maybe this one actually actual our uh, actual uh, outcome is the two, but the thing is uh, depending on the what kind of uh, neighbors we can choose. Like it can say nine or maybe five or maybe maybe four or maybe one and two and two and two and two like this. So based on the, our neighbors, and then we can actually determine the what's the actual value based on the these handwriting numbers. That's the what this example is about. First thing is uh, we actually conducting the 
what the uh, after the resampling the, our uh, our data set, which is uh, that data actually include a lot of observation data set about the handwriting, and then uh, it actually have a kind of a distribution of the pre, uh, actual observations outcome, and then we actually using the this kind of a handwriting. So. <laughs> Actually, I'm kind of very surprised about the uh, when I in the Asian countries actually the way to the writing the every number is the quite constant across the countries like a one and two and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But the thing is, when when I looking at the Americans or maybe some of the other people's the way of the right handwriting about the numbers, yeah, they actually using not these things. They actually using four like this, and then uh, and then the five is like a five like this, and then the seven actually says about uh, writing about the this. So it is a uh, and then the one is like this. So it is all different kind of a variation. So that should be reflected to the, our, our, our predictive outcome, right? That is the things that we have to sorting out and grouping the all of the, these variation about the handwriting numbers. And then using the, these kind of uh, things. And then uh, whenever we have a new handwriting data set, and then uh, we can actually using the what what our model thinks is the closest the num uh, closest the writing number, like uh, like I said, it is like this. This one maybe five five five, and then maybe six in this case. Our most of our nearest the neighbor actually says about the five. That means this one can be uh, predicted as a five, and then we can actually match into our actual outcome for the five. That's the, how we can predict the predict the handwriting numbers uh, based on the KNN uh, nearest the neighbors. Okay, so these are the kind of algorithm as a follows. So we actually try to training the our model in here, training the control, and then uh, training the uh, and then finding the what the, our optimal K is about. Right, and then in this case, we actually choosing the one of the maximum accuracy, which is the three. So that means whenever we have a new data set, we use the k closest the neighbors uh, observations to predict the that new data set. That's the most accurate result depending on the, our observations, and then. When we score, keep scoring down, and then we can actually have a lot of, when we have a lot of features, we also thinking about the, what the variation importance is about. And then we can actually have a heat map for the measurement of uh, the features about the most important influentials across the all responses. I still don't understand why exactly what this one is actually represents. But that's the what it says about the image heat map showing the features to the most influential across the all response cases of our KNA. And then, and then when we scroll down, we can actually get the results like this after the training the our model by using the KNN. So in the first case, when we find the this one, and then and then when we Try to collect the three, uh, three different nearest neighbor. It always says about the seven. That means our prediction is a seven, and then actually is a seven, and then that actually works very well. And this one too, and this one, but this one, and this one, and this one, is a very poorly kind of uh, expected cost when we maybe for example in this case if we have a uh, this variable 
maybe when we select the nearest neighbor for the handwriting, most of the those things is a two and one in this case. It actually model choose the two as a predictive predictions. So that's the kind of a kind of a uh, some kind of accuracy or variation of the, our actual outcomes. Okay, so these are the, actually the the what is the KNN uh, model is about. Okay, so do you have anything to add? Actually, uh, Ricardo, you Ricardo and Angel, you actually adding a lot of a uh, uh, a lot of a uh, uh, link to the thing. So any comments? You just feel free to speak. So for me, this is the end of the end of the chapter mm -hmm. eight. So because uh, KNN yeah, is the uh, most simplest classification technique. So yeah, I, ju I, I just it. wanted to add that one of the, you know, of the applications mm -hmm. of this uh, algorithm, especially mm -hmm. in the in the tidy models, mm -hmm. is to um, is for uh, in, in imputing imputing uh, missing values. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. One of the techniques, because they don't use uh, they don't use multivariate techniques in tidy models. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the the creator uh, Max Connie was very uh, explicit in that, mm -hmm. and and he has reasons why. Mm -hmm. uh, they are basically apart apart from the from the mean, medium mode uh, methods, uh, mm -hmm. which are not you know recommended, of course. Mm -hmm. um, they use uh, bagging. Okay, mm -hmm. which is a tree base uh, algorithm, but also they use uh, KNN. Mm -hmm. And mm, sometimes, you know, not always, but sometimes, you know, you get good, uh, you know, good, good, good results uh, mm -hmm. imputing uh, uh, numeric and, and, and uh, categorical uh, uh, variables. Uh, one of the things are uh, because uh, 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 Angel, right? Angel. Uh, was right to point is that the um, the, the multi dimensions, you know, the prolific the prolifer proliferation of uh, of variables, because this model requires uh, pre processing like uh, linear regression. It requires uh, normalization, standardization, and also you have to one hot encode uh, your categorical variables. They have they all have to be numeric, in other words. Uh, so in that you can have the problem of the you know the the curse of, of of the dimensionality right that you have too many too many uh, predictors in your model so one of the things that you can use is pca okay because pca is one of the you know proven techniques to reduce your dimensionality without losing uh you know much information you know capturing most of the information that those predictors are, are 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 giving you, and that's something that you know you can use in combination with, uh, uh, you know, it, uh, as a pre-process with uh, KNN. Okay. Yeah, it's correct because uh, yeah, PCA is uh, definitely kind of a technique for the reducing the dimension. Because like I said, maybe if we have uh, one hundred features to measuring the distance of the similarity metrics, maybe rather than the using the 100 features as it, as they are, we just uh, demanding, uh, reduce the dimension to the maybe 20, and then we can use the this 20 PCA vector rolling as a, as a representative value of the, our features. And then we use the, this kind of a PCA kind of a indexing values to, to find out the most nearest neighbors. Yeah, that's a good point because that's a PCA KNN approaches, which it does not mean clearly mention into the our chapter, but that is also another way to do that. Yeah, that's a good point. Right. Yeah. Okay, so anything about the angel, please? Yeah, yeah, I was thinking also that oh, okay. yeah, I was thinking also that it's important for this method the mm -hmm. time of normalization that we apply to our way mm -hmm. they explain but it's like they didn't mm. they applied it in the in the example but they didn't explain how that works mm -hmm. uh, i was taking a course mm -hmm. and they explained that if you are using mm -hmm. 
classes. So you all just have one and zero. You should uh, try to make all your other features, numeric features, to mm -hmm. be in that range. Mm -hmm. So to, to achieve that, you can use the step range function mm -hmm. of the recipe. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and sending the picture in the chat. So mm -hmm. using that function, you would take the difference between the current value and the minimum value uh, under the range. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that will yeah. with yeah. that function on the session, you will ensure that mm -hmm. all the numeric values are from a uh, you select what zero to one. That is the, the objective mm -hmm. of this. So yeah. you won't yeah. have any impact of the distance. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the, the best way for this particular model. Yeah, this one is actually what's called the normalization of the values. So when we actually using not only for the distance or similarly in the KNN, actually the formula you just uh, shared is uh, we also use this one for the standardized our value across the across the different variables. And then this one is also quite useful when we try to conduct in the predictive regression model. So yeah, this is also a very good point because because I think that uh, Ricardo also shared about the different kind of a distance metrics as a link. So we can also feel free to check out those things because uh, when we try to do the KNN, what's the important thing about the KNN is the how we can determine the K and then what's the distance measure. we have to use as a as a measure for the similarity metrics these two are the two are the most important most critical one when we try to learn the knn algorithm i guess so i think this is it and then uh let me type the end